A vote in the House of Representatives to condemn bigotry broadly and the 2020 Democratic presidential field comes into a little better focus. Just two of the stories shaping our week and topics for analysis by Shields and Gerson. That's syndicated columnist Mark Shields and Washington Post columnist Michael Gerson. David Brooks is away. Hello to both of you. So, Mark, well, let's talk about this anti-bigotry resolution the House passed uh, yesterday. It was originally they were looking at uh, uh, talking just about anti-Semitism, but they decided to do something bigger than that, passed overwhelmingly. What do you make of this approach by Democrats? What were they dealing with here? They're de dealing with the problem within their own caucus, which is the diversity. It's the strength of the Democratic Party. And it's a, it's also a problem. I mean, it was a challenge for Nancy Pelosi to uh, to deal with it, and uh, this is a it was a major controversy. They had to be confronted and, and confronted. Uh, they did, uh, albeit in public and sort of difficult and uh, painful fashion. Controversy, Michael, of course, was the, a series of statements by the Minnesota Congresswoman Ilhan Omar. Uh, the Democrats were feeling pressure that they had to say something. And as we said, initially, it was, it was going to be accusing, uh, or not naming her, but it was going to say uh, anti-Semitism is something to be condemned, words to that effect. It, it, was, it, was it equally effective for them to do what they finally did or not? Well, there is an insurgent wing of the Democratic Party, progressive insurgent wing, uh, very savvy with social media, very energetic, highly active. Those are all good things. They picked exactly the wrong issue in this matter. I mean, we're, what we're talking about is an anti Semitic trope that was familiar from the middle of the uh, 20th century. Um, and because the Holocaust is a, is a special category of wrong, anti Semitism is a special category of hate. And I think that Democrats, you know, lost some ground by not being able to say something obvious because of the, these divisions within their own party. It was a defeat for, for this uh, uh, Pelosi, Speaker Pelosi. Lost some ground how? You mean the, the leadership of the party? Uh, they were pushed back on an issue where they, I think Nancy Pelosi was clearly right in the way that she wanted to approach this. Uh, I, I guess I, I disagree with Michael in, in this sense. I think um, th there's no question uh, that uh, what he says on the Holocaust and uh, of anti the truth of anti-Semitism. I don't think criticism of Israeli policy under the government of Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, a man who has just uh, collaborated uh, with a racist, uh, a, a, a racist coalition in order to hold on to power while he's indicted uh, on the witch hunt, as he calls it, by a weak attorney general, as he calls it, because he's facing political defeat. Um, I, I don't think uh, criticism of that should be confused with, with anti-Semitism. And uh, there's been a divergence. I mean, the, it, the Jewish American voters have been the most loyal of Democratic voters. They voted four to one for the Democrats in 2018. And there's been a divergence with Israeli, Jewish Israelis. Uh, right now, Donald Trump is the most popular of any country in the world in Israel. Only, only second to the most Philippines. Most popular leader. Most popular leader. Yeah. Um, and and it, 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 there's a divergence. American Jewish voters do not feel that way about him. And the, the fact is, if we're going to talk about anti-Semitism, I think you've got to say this administration has been guilty, not simply as charged. I mean, the closing argument they made in this campaign, Judy, was a, a charge of international money. And, and they put up the images of Janet Yellen and Lloyd Blankfein and George Soros to Donald Trump. So, I mean, you know, this is, a, 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 I'm not in any way a, a defending or rationalizing what I think uh, the Congresswoman from Minnesota has said in, 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 rashly, but I, I, I do think that this is, this has to be clearly the difference between anti Semitism and critical criticism of the Netanyahu regime. Well, I would just say that when you talk about dual loyalty of, of Jewish citizens of the United States, that's not criticism of Netanyahu. And that's what we're talking about here. That's why this could have been a very clear voice and act of the new uh, Democratic House. Um, and instead, I, I think that message got blunted in a, in a process that the Speaker lost.
Well, I, I, I guess I, I think the speaker had a, did not seek this fight, did not want it, and and certainly it's, it's not something the Democrats the Democrats had to confront it. Uh, there's no question about it. But I mean, we're talking about a president, Judy. Let's let's be very blunt about it. Uh, who, when a white supremacist marched through the streets of Charlotte with torches, saying Jews will not replace us, said there's good people on both sides. I mean, so th this is that if you want to see, I wish they condemn him too. I'm yeah. all for okay. that. Well. But Michael, your point is that the Democrats needed to say something strong, and yeah, they and they in didn't reaction do that. to a specific uh, charge that was made and with a specific history. Uh, but uh, you know, I I think they did what they could. Let's talk about another move on the part of the Democrats this past week. Uh, now they've got the majority in the House. They are reaching out, asking for documents from scores of Trump administration officials. They're asking for documents from uh, officials in the White House, the president's daughter, Ivanka. Uh, they're trying to find out about security clearances, Michael, uh, granted to uh, the president's son-in-law, uh, Jared Kushner, his daughter. They're now lo they're talking. Another, another committee is looking at the president's tax returns. It, the, the criticism out there is that this could be overreach. Is it overreach? Is it appropriate? So I think the breadth of these demands is equal to the breadth of the slime that we're seeing. I mean, we've seen it at every stage, with from campaign to transition to inaugural committee to early White House. There, there are plenty of ethical problems to, you know, to examine in, in this case. And this is a case where the Republican Congress didn't do its duties when it came to oversight. It left a bunch of things completely unanswered, which it should have, just as a matter of integrity, itself have, have examined and was used in a political way. And so, I, you know, I think that Republicans very much brought this on themselves. I, I think I think Michael is is absolutely right. I think um, I, I think 71 uh, or 81 was just a daunting number to come up. But we've had two years of, of no oversight, and, and and this is oversight. We're not talking about just searching out a crime, Judy. We're talking about oversight, which is a congressional responsibility of the laws they pass and how they're executed. I mean, we had a Secretary of the Interior quit under resign under force. Uh, we, we've never had a hearing on that or what, 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 what caused it. I mean, we, we can go right through department by department. The Department of Justice was in a state of chaos. But you know, there was no oversight hearing on it, and, and these are legitimate, uh, legitimate uh, inquiries. Uh, and uh, but I, I, you know, I, I, again, I mean, when you start calling up Sean Spicer, I don't know, you're going to get Sean Spicer to comment on the crowd size. I mean, yeah. they, that may be overreach. Yeah. I mean, the White House is calling it a fishing expedition. They're saying you're just reaching for, you're asking for information when you don't know there's anything there. Well, I, yeah, you don't want to do that. But I would spare a little sympathy for the people involved here. Yeah, I was once I do in too. government. Yes. So I, that's you, what I mean. you, you come in to do things idealistically and you end up with a criminal defense lawyer. Yeah. That is a sobering experience. And being you lose a lot of sleep right. under those circumstances. No. And th that, I think, is true in this case. Uh, yeah, it, I, I do think the inquiry into Jared Kushner's security clearance, where the president overruled the experts in intelligence, and to the point where this chief of staff, a four star general, felt obliged to write a memo to put the record on it. That's the reporting. Of course, the White House is denying that that happened. Uh, sticking with the Democrats, Mark, 2020, we had one more name. We had John Hickenlooper jump in, uh, governor of Colorado. But we had a number of people, uh, big names, say they're not going to run uh, for president on the Democratic side. Uh, uh, Michael Bloomberg, the former mayor of New York, uh, Hillary Clinton, I, a lot of people didn't expect that she was going to run, but she said she's not. Uh, Sherrod Brown, the senator uh, from, uh, from Ohio, among others. Is the Democratic field now taking shape? We haven't heard from Joe Biden yet. Um, Janet Hooker the, of the Los Angeles Times said that 1992, his indecisiveness led to uh, uh, Mario Cuomo being called the Hamlet on the Hudson. Joe Biden, she calls the uh, in, indecisive on the Delaware. I mean, he's been agonizing about this for a long time. Uh, the most important to me decision this week was Sherrod Brown's. I agree. Um, and Sherrod, Sherrod Brown, uh, the, the Democrats, uh, you know, conveniently fallen into, I think, the lazy way of thinking that Donald Trump won with racist votes. Um, it's, it, it's a very convenient and kind of smug and wrong interpretation. There are 206 counties in the United States, Judy, that 
voted twice for Barack Obama and then voted for Donald Trump. They're disproportionately in the Midwest. And uh, th those are white counties. Those are white voters who proved they weren't racist by twice voting for an African-American pre president. Um, and so why did they leave them? Sherrod Brown was the answer to the Democrats on reaching them. There were nine of those counties in Ohio. He won seven of them back for the Democrats in 2018. I mean, Sherrod Brown had a, a genuine, authentic appeal to working but men and women, and he, he decided he wasn't going to run. The Senator Brown, uh, Michael, is saying that he's confident that his Democratic Party is going gonna, is gonna to reach out and speak to and listen to uh, people who live in middle America. Well, I think it would have been better to have him on the stage talking about these things. I think the most important figure coming out of this last election was that Donald Trump won uh, white Catholics by, with 60% of the vote. And while Barack Obama had won that group in America, that's a huge swing. Someone is going to have to address in states like Pennsylvania and Wisconsin and Michigan, white Catholic voters and uh, white working class voters in a way that's compelling. And right now, I'm not sure who that is. Well, Joe Biden is not in the race. He's, he, could. he would argue that he's yes, no, is, he, is he's, connected uh, to uh, the he, mid, the great Midwest. He's from Pennsylvania. Yeah, and, uh, and Sher Sherrod Brown, in his defense, was not a one-dimensional candidate. I mean, he was he, he had an F rating for his entire career from the National Rifle Association, and uh, he was the only Democrat on the stage, uh, including uh, Biden or any of the others who had voted against the United States invasion and occupation of Iraq. Um, a, a terror debacle. And I think Minnesota's Amy Klobuchar, the Democrat, would yeah, say that she... She would be in that space as well. She, she would be in that space. All right, we're going to leave it there. Michael Gerson, Mark Shields, thank you. Thank you. Good to be with you.